It's our favourite time of the week again. J1 League Goal Zone coming at you. Second week of the season and Kawasaki still the team with a target on their back. It's up to the rest of the league to stop them from running rampant as they aim for their fifth J1 crown. First rearranged fixture of 2022 and last season's top two faced off at the Nissan Stadium. After half an hour, it was Kawasaki who drew first blood, Akihiro Iyanaga putting the champions ahead. Oh, it's a lovely ball. Played into the box, Iyanaga, surely a finish. He finds the back of the net on this occasion. Frontale held on to their lead until the 57th minute when it all started to unravel for them. Header from Elbert. Oh, that's an outstanding equaliser from the Marinos. Albert looking lively again into Nakagawa. Oh, a quick fire double has put the Marinos into the lead. Sierra looks for Marcos Jr., finds him. Elbert from range! What a move, what a goal from Elbert! Facing their first defeat early in the campaign, Toro Oniki's substitutions finally started to pay off when Kei Shinnen pulled one back for the visitors. Yamane, the lapping run on the inside, great delivery to the box! And a wonderfully headed finish by Kei Shinnen! But a 78th minute screamer from Nakagawa was enough to put his stamp on a terrific showing by the Tricola, a loud statement from the Marinos to take an early advantage in the title race. In the other fixture from match week nine between Urawa and Kobe, a missed penalty and three goals scored in the first 20 minutes provided plenty of drama in Saitama. Down to 10 men as they approached the hour mark, the host held on to a 2-1 lead until the 87th minute, when Tomoaki Makino, on his return to his old club, knocked in a header for Kobe to draw level and steal a point. A look at what's cooking in match week two then, Urawa at home again to host Gamba, Kawasaki continued on the road to play Kashima and the Shizuoka Derby is back in J1 after three years. Shimizu and Jubilo came into this contest with both sides picking up a point from their opening fixture. The last time they met in 2019, Jubilo came out on tops and with a rivalry that dated back to the formation of the J-League, these two clubs would be eager to rekindle their fierce rivalry in the top flight once more. Looking to send that one over the top, it's a very good first touch and drilled into the side netting there by Yuto Suzuki. And Iwata can build again. Little breakaway here now, and there's an opportunity. For the goalkeeper to beat from outside the box, and it's in there. The opportunity presented itself very, very on in that break from Yuito Suzuki, and he had to keep a cool head, as well as making sure he stayed in front of that last defender. Boy again, plays it forward. And uh, once you get into the halfway line, the challenges from these Espos players becomes slightly more energetic and from distance there, some 30 yards tipped over the bar by Ryuki Miura. Good effort from Shirasaki. Played to the centre of the box and that's a good run from the outside, it's over the goalkeeper's head and we have an equaliser. <laughs> to the delight of Akira Ito on the sidelines. Now onto that right hand side that's dug in there by Ito. Across the face of the box, and a shot from just outside the penalty area. Not sure whether it got a touch from the goalkeeper, I don't think the referee thinks it did. And this is the break they have been over on that far side of the field. Two in the middle, three more coming. Shot from outside the box. Oh, what a screamer! And fair to say, the goalkeeper didn't have much of a chance, did he? Katsuhiro Nakayama unleashing with his right foot from outside the box. The referee stops play, dealing out a yellow card there to Noromichi Yamamoto. 
Yeah, and by my reckoning, that's his second yellow card. It seemed to take everyone a while to realise that, but... Looks to me as if Iwata are now down to ten men. Mara again. A little bit firm with this pass forward, but well dealt with. Left-footed shot coming up. Goalkeeper did well, but couldn't quite hold on to it. Managed to take it at the second attempt. Comes inside. Looking for... Yeah, Gonzalez. And Gonzalez has got a straight red there. There must have been an elbow involved. Well, that, that's no elbow. It's uh, the inside of the forearm, which was certainly in an unnatural position. Backs against the wall for Iwata, and left-footed strike. Oh, he should have done better, and he knows it. Beyond the five minutes, the minimum five minutes of time added on for stoppages, the referee puts the whistle to his mouth. And Iwata have lost at home, having also lost two men to red cards. But we finish this one. Jibilu Iwata, one. Shimizu Espulse, two. The Cherry Blossoms did a good job in holding Yokohama to a draw in their first game, and they looked to produce another solid display as they welcomed the new boys to town. Kyoto picked up a win to start their campaign and would be expected to be competitive once again here. 11 minutes in, and after Takashi Inui feeds Matsuki Kato, a fine save from Naoto Kami Fukumoto. And Kami Fukumoto would save well again, after Kato played in Hikaro Nakahara, twisting one way and then the other, finally going to his right, denied by the goalkeeper. The first real chance for Kyoto came from a deep corner in the 34th minute. Hisashi Apia heading the ball down and onto the crossbar, Kosuke Takitomi heading in the rebound. Four minutes later, and Kyoto almost had a second. Peter Otaka doing very well to keep this volley down and safely into the arms of Kim Jin Hyun. On the stroke of half time, and Cerezo looking for an equaliser. A well worked move down the right hand side allows Nakahara to pull the ball back from the byline. Inui shot though smothered once again by Kami Fukumoto. But it wasn't long after the second half got underway that Cerezo did find their equaliser. A slick pass from Hiroshi Kyotake finds Inui, who slides in to slot the ball underneath the goalkeeper's body. Late on in the game now, just seven minutes left, Kiyotake goes on a mazy run that probably took all his strength away when it came to having his shot. You're not going to beat Kami Fukumoto with that kind of effort. And the newly installed goalkeeper who just joined from relegated Fortis wasn't done there, denying Bruno Mendes in the 89th minute. Four minutes into time added on for stoppages, Sota Kitano bursts forward one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, but guess who came out on top in that contest? 1-1 one -one it finished. A frustrating start to the season for Urawa as they kicked off with a loss and a draw. The Reds would be eager to pick up three points as they hosted Gamba then. The visitors were without a win in four, and this would seem a great opportunity for the Reds to earn their first victory. Very early chance for Urawa inside the first two minutes. Kai Matsuzaki blazed that effort over the bar though, from close range. A second bite of the cherry for Matsuzaki seven minutes later. Not swallowed, saved by Kei Ishikawa. Yoshio Koizumi couldn't tuck away the rebound either. It was all Urawa in the early going. Here in the 20th minute, a fine corner finds Eitaro Esaka, his header wide of the target. Urawa still pressing forward here in the 34th minute. Takahiro Sekine tries from distance. It bounces just in front of the goalkeeper, but not causing enough damage for the opening goal. Into the second half now, and from the dead ball, Kazuaki Mawatari, palmed away by Ishikawa. 
Still no goals here in the 81st minute, but Ken Iwao gets his second yellow card for that rather rash challenge. And Urawa are down to 10 men. And that was the signal for Gamba to turn on the afterburners, albeit in the 83rd minute. A good move from the right-hand side and across the edge of the penalty area allowed Yuya Fukuda's shot to be deflected beyond the goalkeeper's outstretched arm. Gamba even had a chance to make it 2-0 in the 88th minute. Kaisuke Kurakawa's shot, though, turned away by Shusako Nishikawa. Up north to Hokkaido, two clubs that finished last season next to each other in mid-table were held to a draw in their respective opening matches. Both teams had proved difficult to break down that week and it was likely that that might prove the case again. Here's Rich Rosh and Ryan. Javi, a lovely back heel into Koroki. The space in behind us on French defence again. This time it's Lucas Fernandez. It's a run inside from Fukumori. It's fallen to Koroki. And that's the opener for the home side. Shinzo Koroki off the mark for his new side. Just the one goal for Urawa. Reflected into the path of one of his teammates in the box. Shiwa gets on it again. Oh, wonderful attempt from the edge of the area. Koroki had done well initially just to hang on to it, but still with Sapporo Kaneko. Cuts it back for the shot. It was Takamine arriving late. Sasaki gives it into Morishima. Lovely ball played into Nagai. He's gone wide though. Gets it back. Morishima! A great attempt. It's come back off the post. Still looking to put away the rebound. Asano eventually finishing off the move for the visitors. How about this from Morishima? Clever bit of work. Opens up for Morishima. Oh, it's scrapped in. They found a way through Sanfraja Hiroshima. Through Sukasa Morishima. His first appearance this season for Sanfraja. Consadole Sapporo looking for a quick response. Sogashiwa. Into Lucas. Gets it onto his right foot. Looked to bend it into the top corner. He's trying to drive it again. But he couldn't quite squeeze it into goal. Dealt with crosses coming into the box well. Koroki's in behind. Just for the moment. It's one on one up against Araki. Gets support from Kaneko. He step over from Kaneko. Plenty of power behind that shot. He couldn't keep it down. Gonzalo Sapporo looking for a winner. Suga delivers deep. Important header away. Show Sasaki it was with that big header. And that'll do it for this one. And that's confirmation of that final score line. It ends here at the Sapporo Dome. Hokkaido Gonzalo Sapporo 1, Sanfrecce Hiroshima 1. Another draw and point shared for these two sides and the hunt for their first win continues. When we come back, a side that was uncharacteristically trounced in midweek, Kawasaki tried to bounce back in Kashima. This is your one-stop shop for all the goals in Asia's top league. J1 League Goal Zone brings you the best from Japan's top division. And next up, the best in the league made their way to the Kashima Soccer Stadium. A comfortable success on opening day for Kashima, and they were now unbeaten in their last seven. Riding high on confidence, they fancy their chances against Frontale, who come into this one on the back of a loss but it would be unwise to write off the defending champions, who were definitely capable of bouncing back. Oli Hogba has your comment. 
Sahid Sasaki. It's 22. Now Wakizawa from range over the top. Goal for the club. Oh, given away, what a mistake, what a dreadful error at the back by Ikuma Sekigawa. And that is the most needless gift because you can't give a team like Kawasaki Frontale that sort of opportunity. It is a Kashima Antlers nil, Kawasaki Frontale one. Dear, 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 what a chaotic piece of play. Got the sense that there would be a real purpose in the Frontale attack as Ueda strikes it. He goes to Kobayashi, chin end. What an excellent save that was. By Kwon Sun 338th game. Ianaga. A good decision made by Ian Alga, plays it to Miki Yamane and then it does fall in the end to Yastro Wakizawa who puts it over from right in front of the goal. Wakizawa, the far post, it's thumped in by Asahi Sasaki for his first ever goal in senior football. It's beautifully taken by the 22 year old to make it Atlas nil from Tolle to and look at the young man, he is overjoyed. And Zai places a touch short, but it still finds Suzuki, who's drifting out wide a little more, and it's a great chance, it must be put in. Oh dear. Yuta Higuchi, like his opposite number, Yasuto Wakizawa. Higuchi for Suzuki, Suzuki flicks it on to Evaldo, good stop. Jung Sung Ryong with a well judged tip of the ball behind. After the start of the season, people were asking some questions of Kawasaki Frontale. They lost the Super Cup final. They lost 4 2 to the Madinos. This is a more typical performance from Toro Oniki's team because it is a Kashima Antlers nil, Kawasaki Frontale 2. A goalless affair to open their campaign was probably not what Sagan had in mind, and they'd be eager to get their first win with Shonan in town. The away side, having already tasted their first defeat, needed to come up with a solid performance before getting sucked back into the relegation vortex. Midway through the first half and a beautiful left-footed cross from Yuki Horigome finds Yuta Fujihara, who had to stretch, but did well enough for the opening goal. With Sagan 1-0 up, two minutes later they were out looking for a second. Fujihara's right-footed effort almost brushing the far post. It was a good first half from Sagan and they almost made it 2-0 minutes before the referee's whistle. Diego with the cross, Taichi Kikuchi having difficulty keeping the volley down, smacks it against the crossbar. That miss would be regretted here in the 68th minute. In goal, Park Hill Q tries to be Ronaldinho and pays the penalty. Shuto Machino with the equaliser. Jonah now looking for the winner in the 73rd minute. From the dead ball, Ryota Nagaki into the side netting. Another dead ball in injury time. This time Nagaki whips it in for Machino to head, but Park this time does the sensible thing. 1-1 it finished. After ending the 2021 season on a high, Visser were brought right back down to earth after failing to win in their first game of the campaign. Avispa have proven to be a difficult team to beat, having avoided defeat in their last six, and the visitors would be fancied to steal the points if Kobe were to let their guard down. An early chance for Avispa here in the third minute. The corner finds Lukian, his header though brushed wide of the goal frame. 
At the other end of the field, 35 minutes later, Yuya Osako on the break, manages to fend off the attention of the defender, but is shot across the pace of the goal. Into the second half now, and Vissel Kobe on the attack. A delightful pass from Andres Iniesta, finds Daiju Sasaki, and his finish didn't quite match the quality of the supply. 20 minutes left, and this would be the last big chance of the game. Geordie Crew curls in the free kick. Douglas Grolly gets his head to it, but can't hit the target. This one finishes 0 0. A stunning display in midweek to defeat the reigning champions, and that could set the tone for the Marinos this season as they seek their fifth J League title. They needed to avoid complacency as they travel to play Kashiwa. A tougher assignment for the hosts, who'd have to keep their focus to get something out of this one. Mark Richmond, with your commentary. Anderson Lopez uh, managing to just uh, screen the ball well enough away from Koga. Space opening up right now. Oh, shot does come in and spilled by the goalkeeper. Anderson Lopez he gobbles it up. And in his first start for his brand new club, the poacher in the penalty box has gotten the opening goal after five minutes. Definitely saw it before it even reached his boot. Takaoka, who is very good with ball and feet. Oh, it's a mistake by Eduardo. Hosoya, surely. Hosoya in. The equalizer. Mao Hosoya took a couple of deflections, but it's gone into the back of the net. Douglas, oh, totally taken out of it. Tanaka's got a watch, he's already on a yellow card. Douglas says that should be another yellow, and it will be red for Shinosuke Hatanaka. Matios, Hosoya wants the ball, he wants Hosoya in the box! And he found Yamada, who almost found his first J-League goal. Had the opportunity by staying stationary. Goalkeeper this time makes a mistake. He looks at the assistant referee, wants a flag, doesn't get it, and Douglas puts it into the back of the net, and his goal-scoring record against Yokohama Marinos continues. Hosoya sets it up nicely now. Maie! What a debut that would have been. First touch of the ball in J-League football. Once again, Matteo Silva. Savio right down the line for Hosoya. Called apart by Iwata, who's not so happy. He says that he had control of the ball. It's only yellow for Tomoki Iwata. But, uh, is there going to be further punishment for Iwata? So it might be the 15th sending off. No yellow, straight red. to the ball has defeated Koyamatsu now through the legs of the goalkeeper three goals and surely three points for Kashiwa Resol and how about this for a start to the season for Tomoya Koyamatsu two games two sub appearances two goals Maie has taken one over the goalkeeper it comes after this one they want another goal <laughs> Maybe they're asking a little too much. They'll take three. They will take it. It's their first victory against them since 2013. They're 3-1 winners. A look at the results from match week two then. Shimitsu taking top honours in the Shizuoka derby and a first victory for Gamba after defeating Tenman Urawa. Kawasaki delivered their most convincing effort yet with a 2-0 win over Kashima. Promoted Kyoto held Cerezo to a 1-1 draw, while San Frecce at Sapporo and Shonan at Sagan all finished with the same score too. Three matches in and a familiar sight once again. Kawasaki parked at the top of the table, but only in second after a huge win against Yokohama. Kashiwa find themselves occupying the top spot. Shimizu starting their season well. Third spot, far cry from their relegation woes last year. Kyoto doing well on their return to the top flight, unbeaten with four points. The Marinos failed to capitalize on their midweek success and will have to settle for fifth. Another familiar sight at the other end of the table, Shonan already wading around the bottom after two games. 
but still very early days of course, with more than half of the teams yet to register their first win. It will be presumptuous to write any side off at this stage. That's all the time we have for you this week. We hope you enjoyed this thrilling start to the season with us here on the J1 League Goal Zone. My name's Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time. ฝากติดตามกด subscribe ช่อง YouTube j l e a g u e International ด้วยนะครับ Like subscribe get push notifications Like subscribe push notification s